Kind of, there's lots of things, aren't there, to get excited about in the world. Yeah. And um, it just, it's the one that makes the most human sense to me that I think mm -hmm. I'm going for. And I didn't really get VR until I experienced um, the kind of social bit around it. When you're outside of the VR experience and you're then in a place just chatting to people yeah. in a VR like lobby. I don't know if you've heard sure. of the way VR. You mean speak socializing in VR? Yeah. Okay. Because um, that's how I met. I met this guy called Adam Amigo from the way VR. Oh, I know. I'm an investor in the way Adam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I should know all about it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, that's that was my first so you, experience of like wave, a, you, the way. Did you have a music experience with the Well, wave? first of all, yeah, because I was just there seeing a demo at this place where I was working on some blockchain stuff in London called the Digital Catapult. And they were like, oh, you should come and check out this way, this, this VR experience. So I put the headset on and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I was like DJing, doing their thing, you know. Yeah. And that was, that was fun. And then um, and then I said, Is it, can I speak to anyone? Is anyone in here a developer? And um, Adam said, oh yeah, yeah, I could speak to you. So we went kind of into a quiet corner and just chatted and I was a panda and he was a cat. And it was just felt really natural. Like yeah. I could really see his gestures. I couldn't see his face. But... Sure. And then he said, oh look, we've got to let some other people in now because it was like a demo day. So I said, okay, well, can we carry on chatting? So we went to Skype and it was just so rubbish um, in comparison. Sure. And I just, I just, I don't know, suddenly like, the future of myself and my daughter came to mind because I'm like terrified she's going to go off into space and I'm never going to see her again. So this idea that we could still go see a movie and have a chat afterwards and, but in the VR space just suddenly felt a lot more real. Yeah. As a music maker, um, I'm interested in identity as I think you are. Um, and it kind of becomes, you become aware of the fact that you're a creator but you're also obviously human. Uh, you create, but you're also interested in other people's creations. So, just as one, you know, we're talking about how the individual music maker is going to be identified across platforms, linking to one identifier, where they can decide, you know, what they want what they don't want to be sharing data with. Um, even the idea of kind of incentive economy versus like sh like um, noise of advertising. Like, how can you switch on and off? advertising from a user perspective and be paid for viewing advertising that actually interests you. Mm -hmm. kind of interested in that concept as something that would add on to an identity, a kind of app for yourself. Anyway, so in the music space, it's how, so how does the music maker, you know, lasso all of their fragmented identities all over the place with different organisations and create better flow of data and acknowledge other people into their music and create other opportunities for services to be built on that layer, thin layer. We really need to first of all get the word out there that if musicians can claim their space of their place in the world as a music maker and share their skills and share their projects, that, that we can encourage the music industry and wider how to invite other revenue streams outside of just the licensing of songs because the streaming age um, probably represents with most artists about five percent of their income but 95 percent of other stuff that we could be earning money from then one of the biggest issues that the vr um, industry is already having is how do they get music content because you can't license it easily. It costs a lot of money. You have to have tons of money in advance to be able to buy uh, or have the opportunity to use works in like record labels and publishing. Um, you have to have money in advance of the, to have the um, to have the ability to be able to use it, rather than just when you're when you're profit. You know when you're profiting when you're when you have profit, then you you know you give the money out when you can, rather than have to raise all this capital just to have some music to play and experiment with in your platform before you even get started. So it's not in our interest the way that the, the industry is structured at, at all. Sure. Um, and we really need to invite innovation by way of opening up our individual data and having control. You've done like experimenting with you know scarce music experiences. Um. No, I've done the opposite. Okay. <laughs> I've been like, here's all, here's my stuff, here's it's, some it's stuff to play with, go ahead and experiment. Mm -hmm. um, no, I haven't, I haven't explored that, but it's very interesting to imagine that, you know, that you could put a price on a thing 
and you know only 10 people in the world have the opportunity to interface with that and, mm-hmm. and then they could equally share it like a piece of art that's right um, and that you could but you share it you, you don't have it yeah. yeah but you can decide couldn't you you could decide like that's in the art industry that's what's quite how do you see I don't know in five years this whether it's blockchain or VR mm. how that will change the, change the music industry so I and imagine do you see you know any opportunity to disrupt the, the streaming music companies right now that's so dominant yeah huge I mean to be honest I feel like streaming companies have actually they get a bad rap but they've done an amazing thing they've made it possible for people to buy music um, in an easy way we have an op- opportunity here with blockchain technology where we can really truly reimagine the music space um, for the betterment of everyone um, you know I've said to fans okay today just send me in any sounds of stuff going on in your house right now and let's see what happens oh. um, so there's like a Pomeranian dog sound or there's somebody opening a fridge door or there's somebody jingling some pills or something you know and they all send me these sounds I had like 750 sounds in a space of two hours and I started to make this piece of music and by the end of the day and my newborn niece um, I was in the tummy of her mummy and I used her heartbeat coming through the scan as the, as the tempo of the song. Wow, that's so that, cool. So that went in. So by the end of the day, she, the, the baby had come out, she's called Robin, um, and she was listening to her heartbeat in her mummy's tummy um, with the sound of somebody's Pomeranian dog and somebody's fridge door opening and a car going by and all kinds of stuff. And that started the beginnings of this piece called Lifeline. And then the second day I said, right, I want to know what's on your mind. Just send me words of stuff that you're thinking of right now. And so we made a word cloud. And um, everybody sent in things like um, oh, gravity, wave, um, uh, seismic. It, it was about an earthquake. It was a Sendai earthquake because it just happened that weekend. It was on everyone's mind. And so we incorporated that into a story that was something that I'd personally experienced um, into the into the narrative. It was all, you know, it was it was hard to do because it's you know how do you how do you um, how do you oh, what's the word um, how do you acknowledge who's been involved? How do you keep the the, mm. the the piece of audio that they sent with their name? How do you get sure. their name correctly spelled? The data provenance. Yeah. How do you uh, thank them? How do you incorporate that rights? Is there a rights thing there? And there were there are some performers who do get paid from it if they they pay the long violent piece. Um, and there's lots of things that you have to do in order to do that. And really, I feel like lightweight collaboration um, is the future of things like that happening more often but it's hard to do if we all don't have identities and we know it's all kind of over there on Facebook and, and we don't have a way to do that as ourselves.